Depersonalization is, or seems to be, a growing psychological phenomena. And when I was personally going through it, there seemed to be a lack of information out there for the general public to just get a grip or get a better understanding of what exactly is going on. And so I had to sort of stumble my way through that and I figured I'm not sure what the situation exactly is right now but I figured you know if I could share my experience and share what I have learned perhaps it might help some of you out there who are searching for or feeling similar and searching for this sort of information and so firstly I will read some of the symptoms or some of the things that characterize what is what deep personalization feels like and so here it goes you keep thinking about what is real and what isn't you struggle to concentrate your body feels numb weightless or hollow you know these experiences aren't felt by other people and aren't caused by real changes in the world. Images and sounds are distorted. The world feels unfamiliar or artificial. Your emotions feel numbed or superficial. You feel remote and detached. And so... These are quite general My experience was that it more so focused on The feeling or The fear that you're going insane That you're going crazy And it's all And, and it sort of Had an irksome quality about it I kept obsessing over towards small details like is this handle really the way it was before? Have I ever seen this handle? And focusing on minute details and was that there before? And you know, getting really anxious about it and finding these ways or habits to sort of check if I'm still in reality, if I'm if I'm still sane and and so to all of you who might feel similar, I just want to say that it's just anxiety, basically. It's an interesting form of anxiety psychologically, but basically at, at, at bottom, it's anxiety that you're feeling. You're not going insane. You're not going crazy. You're not, you know, you're not developing schizophrenia and, and, and so on. If anything, you can think about it if it comforts you that it's sort of a defense mechanism for, for insanity. And it might seem quite paradoxical, but at least Viktor Frankl wrote that he never found people who felt these, he called it anticipatory anxiety and hyper-reflection the people who felt these symptoms, they would rarely go insane. And he sort of argued that, or at least I understood it, that if you have these feelings of, you know, always checking, always having a fear of that, of going insane, that you're not actually going insane. You're too much in control. And so... If it helps, you can think about it in a way that you're sort of defending against that. Because if, if you think about it, if you wouldn't have this sort of mechanism, you would just sort of slip away. And although 
this defense mechanism doesn't feel very, <laughs> very good. You know, it's, it's better than actually going insane. And so you should treat it more as a, or you should think about it more as a signal, as, as a siren going off that, hey, something is going wrong and you should deal with that. You should do something about it. And so in my experience, it was that there was something hiding under it. And depersonalization can be caused or at least triggered, you know, pushed over the edge by a negative drug experience. And I focused on that myself very much, thinking that it was just the negative drug experience, but it was not. It was more so like a, a match to a barrel full of gas. You know, there was something already in me just awaiting the right push, the right ignition. And so there, there's always something under it in my, in, in, in my eyes. And honestly, the only thing I can recommend is if you're going through this, if you have these feelings of depersonalization, you just need to go to a qualified therapist. And if they're qualified, if, if, they're, if they're willing to help, you will find what's at bottom. You, know? you, you, you will go through it together and you will find what's, what's really bothering you and the symptoms will stop. For me, it's, they stopped almost immediately. I think it was two or three sessions and they pretty much just went away. And that's the problem, you know. I could have done that so much earlier, but it was months that I hesitated, that I, that I thought that I could deal with it myself, that it would go away. Or, you know, after that, when they didn't go away, I felt like it's doomed, it's pointless, you know, it's never going away. And, and it's scary to feel like that, and especially if you're lonely. And if you, when, when you have these symptoms, you don't really feel like talking about them because... You know, feeling like you're going insane and then telling people and them thinking you are going insane does not, it's not a solution. It doesn't help. But in my experience, if I just went months earlier, I would have saved myself a lot of anxiety and a lot of, a lot of negative feelings, you know, a lot of bad situations. And so whatever it is that's stopping you, you know, if it's money, no money in the world is worth your sanity and your well-being. And if it's other things, then I encourage you, just take the step, just call someone, call a therapist and book an appointment and, ju and just go, just see it. What pushed me over the edge was that it's not going to be worse going to a therapist. Nothing could be worse than this. And you can wait and reach that point, but I wouldn't recommend it. Just, if you can, ju just, just do it. Also, the, the thing I would recommend for those who are into psychology and would like to read or delve deeper into it, or retrospectively delve into what happened, I recommend Viktor Frankl's The Will to Meaning. It's not about depersonalization, but it hits the notes surprisingly perfectly. And so I already mentioned it, but Frankl talked about anticipatory anxiety, which is the fear of something happening to you activates that fear. So, for example, if you fear of going insane and you obsess over it, you just feel the fear that you're going insane just grows. It, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's sort of a closed loop. It becomes a loop. And he also talked about hyper-reflection. When you're so focused in on what's happening to you, it just... Naturally, if you put a microscope, if you 
what if you look at something through a microscope, it gets bigger. And that's the same thing, the one I mentioned, when you start thinking like it, looking at things and am, am I really feeling this? Am I really in reality? And of course, if you start thinking like this, you will notice strange things because that's just how we humans work. We don't notice tiny little details. And every day I go through the same path you know, towards wherever I'm going and I notice new things every single day and I walk through houses that I've never noticed before or details on the houses that I've never noticed before and that's that's normal. You don't pay attention to that but when you're hyper, when you're in that state of hyper uh, reflection, that's what brings about the anxiety. And so he talked about these two things that really quite well characterize depersonalization and I wanted to share with you a method that I learned from this book. And it was surprisingly helpful not to cure it. Don't use it as a cure, but to numb it down. You know, when I, when I felt an attack of depersonalization, when it was uh, gaining its strength in me, this method really worked as a control mechanism. And Frankl called it paradoxical intention. And basically, it works through the way that you focus on what you fear. So for, let's stick with my example of the fear of going insane. And what you do is you talk to yourself, you make yourself... feel the fear in a, in a comical way. Frankl talked a lot about humor relief and... Uh, so basically, if I'm really afraid of going insane, then I focus on, you know, paradoxically, I start to try and go insane. I could say to myself, you know, okay, now you go insane. You, 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 you'll be the most insane person in the world. You, you, and you, you sort of hyperinflate, you, you overreach. And, and if you find that point where you... you put so much emphasis on it and I will go insane, I will make the biggest scene in the world and everyone and the newspapers will write about it and you feel that laugh coming up, Frankl found that that was the soothing feeling, you know, that that's what uh, numbed down the symptoms and it's really weird, it's a really weird mechanism but that's why it's called paradoxical intention because you would never think that you know, trying to feel the thing that you're afraid of would help, but it, it does. It really weirdly does. And you could try this out for yourself, but you really have to mean it. You really have to try and make yourself laugh and make it feel comical, you know? I think Frankl wrote about someone who was afraid of sweating in uh, public. And so he made him think about, like, how would, okay, he's going to a meeting and he will be the biggest, sweatiest man in the world and the whole room will run with his sweat and so on and it made the man laugh and sort of made his made his fear go away, at least for a little while. I didn't find, uh, I did not find it to be curative in the long term, but it really helped in those tiny moments when you, when you, when you, you know, you're in social situations or what have you, you're alone in your room at night and you feel the anxiety building up and, you know, you need a, a way to relieve it and a good way, not alcohol or drugs or what have you, which are dangerous. In if you're feeling depersonalization, you can really get hung up on that. So try this method out. And if you're willing to, you know, Frankl's The Will to Meaning, there's really useful stuff for you if, you, if, you, if you're dealing with depersonalization. And so that's pretty much what I what I had to say about it. Leave off with the message that you're fine. Really, you're fine. It's anxiety, basically. And what you need to do is you need to go to a qualified therapist, a psychologist, and just talk this thing out. And most likely, you're going to be fine. If you're still waiting to take that step and you're here watching this, 
this is the signal for you to take that step. As I've said, if you can, don't try and go to that place where, where you end up thinking that, you know, nothing could be worse than this and then you go to a therapist. Because you can easily end up in that place thinking nothing could be worse and your conclusion would not be to go to a therapist but to go the other way and you shouldn't do that. This thing is beatable, it's overcomable and I don't know if that's a word but you can overcome it. And I've did myself and I've been living fine since I, I felt I feel like I've grown as a person significantly after this experience. And so I wish for you to do the same and good luck. You can do it.